So good job on chapter two. However, a good a job you did. That was a lot of work. Um, some of you are, are further along than others, but there's like, you've either got a huge amount of work to do on chapter two, if you're far along. Like some of you, I commented, this is really far along. Well, you all have a huge amount of work to do. And then if I didn't say you're really far along, you've got a ton of work to do. But that doesn't, that's not now. That's not in these two weeks. That's in the fall. Okay. So I'm getting hollered at by my daughter. And it's recorded for posterity. Patience is not like her number one thing. She's six. So why would it be? All right, y'all, I'm going to show you the, what we got. Some of you have looked at this already. It's chapter three. Whee! Here we go. All right, so um, you'll see in our schedule that chapter three only has like one week. That's not enough time to write a good chapter three, but that's not what's expected. Okay? You guys shoot for about 10 good pages. That would be good if you can get 10 good pages of chapter three done. All right, here's our agenda for this meeting. We're going to talk about chapter two a little bit. We're going to look at some APA stuff because you might notice, uh, I don't think I really looked at your writing quality or, or style. I may have mentioned a few things. If, if tone was an issue, I mentioned it. Um, so we'll look at APA guidelines. We're going to look at the purpose of chapter three. We'll go through the guidelines. Everybody's doing qualitative, so we won't look at quantitative stuff. And then we'll look at the methodology practice and what to do for that. Some of you have already begun that process. All right, there's some things that are like my pet peeves, and these are all things that I had to be taught, so I actually do have... Uh, a lot of empathy for these because I remember all the things like all the things that I say to students now I'm like oh, somebody said that to me too so the first one is don't use the phrase the researcher unless you're talking about someone other than yourself like if you're doing like a talking about a study that was done by one researcher you can use the phrase the researcher you can't say, don't do that. Everybody's doing qualitative research and um, qualitative research. You're the, you're the thing. You're the instrument. You're the, you're the everything. You can't take yourself out of that. Um, you guys, everybody needs to look at the APA guidelines on headings. We've got, you know, so you can have up to six levels of headings and, uh, so you need to use those. Almost everybody needs to use uh, three levels of headings. Okay. So a lot of chapter twos just had the second level, second level, second level, second level the whole time. To get through chapter two, readers need to see that organizational structure. The passive voice is often confusing. The biggest exceptions that are like good to use a passive voice in is chapter three. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we move along. <clears throat> Otherwise, you mainly want to use the active voice. Whoever the thing is, the or the person is who's doing the action, put them at the beginning of the sentence. Don't back into a sentence. Put your subject at the beginning. Say what they did or are doing, whatever. Okay, that's active voice. Uh, quotes and paraphrases require page numbers. I saw that. Just quotes with no page numbers. We can't have that. Don't use a font unless it's Times New Roman. Do 12 point, do one inch margins, half inch indents. There's something with the spacing. Everything needs to be double spaced. There should be no extra space included before or after a paragraph, before or after a heading. It all needs to be equidist, equidistant, 
every single line needs to be equidistant from every other line on the same page. Okay. And then you guys have access to this. This is the checklist. I think I already got it pulled up right here. These are some of the things like writing advice type things. Um, the only one that I've seen that we need to look at together based on what you guys have been doing is you justify what's included. That goes for concepts, sections, study participants, inclusion justification, typically requires a statement about relevance. Don't just say it is relevant, say show how, say how. And then also sometimes you got to justify what you're excluding. I did see a little anthropomorphism, so let's look at that. So anthropomorphism is when you give inanimate life, inanimate objects life with their verb. So people have phrases in their chapter twos like this study discusses. It's like, no, it doesn't. Studies can't discuss anything. Uh, research has investigated. No, researchers investigated. So usually it's a quick little fix. So instead of saying an inanimate object, you replace that. So like theories, social cognitive theory asserts, Social cognitive theory doesn't assert anything. Social cognitive theorists assert. So that's what, just a little tweak that's going to help your academic tone. Okay. All right, that's that. Any questions about style, writing? Here we go, chapter three. All right, what's the purpose of chapter three? Well, this is like your research methodology, research design. It describes and justifies the methods that you choose to gather data and analyze it. Okay. And the part so that you can answer your research questions. Okay. The big difference between a PhD and an EDD is that PhDs are expected to be full experts on their methodology and they're expected to innovate make you know add something make it unique you don't have to do that you can basically use the formula from studies that you've read what you read about ethnography i kind of help you with just like hey just most of us are going to do some combination of interviews focus groups observations artifact analysis okay and it gets particular with your different methodologies that you're using, the research traditions, if you remember from your qualitative course. All right, here's the pieces of chapter four. And I'll add in if it's like qualitative specific here. I got another slide for that. All right, obviously, introductions. Say what's in the chapter. Research question. Description of the research approach. So, for example, ethnography. Some of you are doing ethnography. Some of you are doing case studies. Some of you are doing phenomenology. Any any others? Anybody doing narrative analysis? Narrative is another good one. Anybody doing grounded theory? Please, no. Please, no. <laughs> Ground theory is not my favorite. Okay, good. All right, this section on your approach, you are going to talk about the origin of the approach, its development, how it's used in education, and then generally what people do, what ethnographers do to gather code and analyze data what phenomenologists do to gather code, analyze the data. Coding is part of analysis. Don't get tripped up on that. Discuss the design, the research design, including the ways the approach fits your specific study. So that'll be kind of the last part of this research approach section is why this approach is suited to your purpose, your question, that kind of thing. Okay. At the bottom, it says a minimum of three types of data must be included to attain triangulation of the data. Well, I don't know why that's there, because you don't need to talk about that in this, in this section. All right, next section. 
participants in the setting. I think it makes more sense in my mind to do your setting first and then the participants. Description of the population to be used, the study setting, the rationale for sample types. Rationale for sample types means why this place and why not others? Why these participants and why not others? Okay, so that's your inclusion and exclusion criteria. All specific information regarding population and setting should remain confidential. So if you're saying, for example, this school has 56 teachers, don't say the school has 56 teachers. Say the school has around 55 teachers or something like that. So just don't allow people to like pin down the exact number. Okay. That's how you keep things confidential. The study participants section, you talk about how you recruit participants and protect them. Uh, including the informed consent procedure. But briefly here, because you're gonna have this other section you see over here, ethical considerations, you can go a little deeper. But here you just mention it briefly. All right. So we have to figure out like where we are and who the people are before we say what we're going to collect. How are they gonna help us? What information are they gonna give us? The next section is data collection. Okay, so this says, discuss in a scholarly manner. That means you're gonna have citations. The management of the data collection, such as transcribing interviews, taking notes, observations, artifact investigations, focus groups, all that stuff. All the procedures used to gather data should be discussed specifically for the study in relation to scholarly methodology literature. So you will want to be citing methodologists in your research tradition, if possible, the course that you guys took, most of, I think everybody, 747, uh, Robert Yin is a case study methodologist. So Robert Yin's book that you used in that course will be a good thing to use to cite why you're doing interviews, how you're doing interviews, that kind of thing. All right, ethical considerations. Look at this, procedures for gaining permission to do the study you'll talk about. IRB, the IRBs in your district, the district of the study, and Carson Newman. Explain the manner in which participant confidentiality was established, how you avoided coercion, um, objectivity, impossible. Objectivity was attempted is really a better word right there. Um, when you talk about reducing bias, that's great. When you talk about mitigating bias, that's great. If you write anything about eliminating bias, you got to be kidding me. Okay. All right. Don't do that. Include a trustworthiness subsection that includes description of how member checks, audit trails, reflexivity, and peer reviewers are used throughout the research process. This is something that if you don't know the difference, for example, between a member check and a peer review, we just talk real quick. We we'll sort that out like that, okay? All right, it's easier to talk that out than to write it and explain it in an email or a comment. Data analysis procedures. Last thing before the summer. How did you take all this data and put it together. Some people actually don't do anything on triangulation until they get to the end of data analysis procedures. Because they're like, hey, here's how I'm gonna analyze my interviews. Here's the coding process used for the interview, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's how I'm gonna analyze the survey data that I collect, blah, blah, blah. And then here's the third thing. And then at the end, you're like, here's how all these things will work together. Here's what I will do if contradictions between those different forms are found. Here's what I do when they align, okay? The point of triangulation is, I don't know why that's not to finish with. Prefer it right there. 
why is this? I don't even understand why this is here. Okay. Anyway. All right. Now. Okay. Any questions now? Quick question for me. Since I haven't completed the research yet, when I'm writing the data analysis or data collection, am I using past tense or active tense? It's crazy, I know, but just go with me on this one. We're going to write chapter three as if we have done it. Okay. And the reason we do that is because it saves us a whole bunch of time. Okay. So we'll say, for example, so let's talk about passive voice, active voice. This is a great, mm -hmm. great question for that. You can say, I transcribed interviews. I transcribe the interviews using Otter AI. Mm -hmm. It's totally acceptable to use the passive voice in that situation. Interviews were transcribed. What the APA manual says is whatever you're trying to emphasize, that should be the subject of the sentence. So it's okay to do passive voice because you're emphasizing the interviews, not yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that so interviews were transcribed. Uh, observations were performed. I really don't like that one so much because you're the one observing, but interviews are transcribed. Some of these things can be like, you can put yourself out of it. Um, what else do we say? Uh, a focus group was conducted. Okay. So those are things that, and where does that go? That doesn't go in that first section where you're talking about ethnography or phenomenology or case study. That goes in that next section where you talk about data collection the data collection section mm -hmm. good thank you mm -hmm. all right any other questions right now before we go on all right let's look next slide all right i've already said this so what about the description of specific research approach? I've already said that. I've already said that. And I've already I deleted that from the previous slide. Now let's look at this stuff. In what context did the research approach you were using emerge? For example, ethnography grew out of the field of anthropology. Okay. How did the methodology develop from its origin? So you're going to kind of trace what happens into the world of educational research. Again, this is an EDD. It's not a PhD. So if you are only relying on one or two sources for two and three, I'm probably going to let that slide. Obviously, it'd be better to have two or three sources. But if, if you've got one and it's authoritative, I'm not going to bother you about it. Okay. Um, it is nice. It's real nice if you can find some really important, influential, educational studies of that particular genre. Okay, so um, we got to do a little insert your thing there. So the one of the, the classic, you know, I know this for grounded theory, right? For grounded theory, one of the most important studies in adult education was Jack Mesereau's study of women coming back uh, to get a degree in the in the 1970s? Okay, so anyway, that that influenced so many people because so many people realized, hey, this is actually a good methodology to use for education. We can learn a lot with it. All right, all right. How does this qualitative approach handle? The elements, that is to say, interviews, focus groups, artifact analysis, stuff like that. All right, what's your research design? This is where you can put in a chart that shows your procedures from start to finish. Okay. So subsections might appear like this. Okay, so then I've got this little thing that you can copy and paste to to kind of beef up augment or whatever your outline 
All right, we've got some more here. Specifics on study participants and setting. Include demographics, such as the geographic region. Sometimes people have a whole little section, like they'll do a whole page on Appalachia, the Appalachian region. Dog wants to join our meeting. Uh, if you can, some of you have to kind of include Tennessee because you've got so much specific to Tennessee. But if it's possible, and I want you to step back and kind of think, hey, do I really need to say Tennessee? Or can I just say like South Southeastern United States, a state in the Southeastern United States? Whatever steps you can take to preserve anonymity, uh, confidentiality rather, do it. There's no harm in making it more confidential. Um, but I guess if you need to use Tennessee, then do. Some of you who are really kind of in the, like focusing on some policy, you have to say the policies of Tennessee. So, all right, number three, talked about that, justify inclusion and exclusion of participants. The subsections often include the region, participants. Um, okay, subsections for data collection. Um, I already said that. The site references that specifically discuss interviewing. General qual methods literature in your qual course textbook can be used unless your approach has a special way of doing observations. So if you're doing phenomenology, you can't quote, don't quote Robert Yin, right? I'll send you an article if you're doing phenomenology. Use a different subsection for each procedure, for each, you know, focus group, survey, individual interview. <clears throat> okay, with the ethical considerations, you need to address power issues. If you're the principal or an assistant principal interviewing your own teachers or students, that's not ideal. So you better, you know, you better write about how it's worth it. So it's not like there's no rules. Like some people would be like, what? You're your you're the principal and you're interviewing your own teachers like okay yeah that that sounds bad if that's all that you say right but then you put in the caveats you put in the like hey here's the risk reward here's the trade-off okay people have written about this you're not the first person to have done a study where you have some power over the people that you are interviewing okay all right that's the only additional point there. With data analysis split by data tape type, say how each was analyzed, frame within methodological literature if possible, or the general qualitative research literature. If you don't know much about coding, go back to your qualitative research course by Saldana's coding manual. Um, there are lots of you know videos on there about how to code, but what do you put in your paper? You're going to cite a YouTube video and in your dissertation? Not with my approval, you're not. Get a good source. Say how you analyzed in a unified way. And what I mean that is across the different, that's triangulation. And what you do with confirmation across sources and contradiction. Okay, that's all quantitative. And then that's the methodology practice. That's all I've got on chapter three. So, questions? At this time, I don't have any questions, but I probably will <laughs> once I soak all this in. Yeah, I don't think my camera is working, but um, I'm here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and this one, here's what I'm going to say, is um, you all, as a group, are, you kind of like did better than any group I've had on chapter one. Overall, you kind of did better than any group I've had on chapter two overall. Now, let me tell you, every single student I've ever had has one of the chapters where they're just like, 
it doesn't come easy. So might be chapter three for you individually and for you as a whole group. Like it's weird because it's like, oh, the whole thing is off-putting. It's like, I, would, I didn't even do this. I'm writing about it in the past tense. That's weird. So that can throw off your writing. Two, this is probably the most foreign thing. Three, I've looked at the qualitative research class. I've examined it carefully. And as a qualitative researcher, I'm like, hey, we only have seven weeks. It's good. Okay. But you only had seven weeks. People who are doing qualitative research for their dissertation usually have six hours, 12 hours of qualitative research methodology courses, but definitely six. So I'm going to help you. But this one is going to be the biggest struggle. Again, try to get about 10 good pages by Friday or whenever that due date is. Okay. If there's a certain part of it where you're like, I got to have Dr. Stone's help on this. Don't write that part. Okay. Go on. Some of the ones that probably will be like easier to write are like the ethical consideration section. Uh, it might be easy to write that research approach thing because you don't have to say what you do. You just say, hey, here's what's usually done. Okay. I'm going to uh, pull up one more source and I'm going to put it in the chat um, before we move on to the methodology practice. Okay, let me see here. Yes, good. I've got it already pulled up. Exactly as I planned. Ha <laughs> ha. Share. That's the button I'm pressing. You know, from all my listening to podcasts, oops, copy link. From all listening to podcasts, I know to narrate what people can't see. So I'm copying and pasting and now I'm hitting enter. Now, this document right here, which I'm going to, we're going to look at it together just in case you can't click on that right now. Share button. Okay, done. This is something I showed you before, but now let's look at it again. Because when you look at chapter three, look at all the, the, the resources we've got linked right here. And then if you're, if you're like, hey, I need more, just email me. I'm going to send you stuff. But we got an article on audit trail, article on field notes, an article on general interviewing, an article on observations, an article on focus. These are all things that you can use these sources to beef up the scholarship of your chapter three. If you're doing case study, here's kind of a couple right here. Many of you are doing case study. I got one source on ethnography. I know maybe two of you are doing ethnography. Okay. All right. Okay. Any questions? Let's <laughs> hope so you don't hear. I hope you're not overhearing. Clean up. Okay. Last thing. This is, um, you're going to like this assignment. This assignment is interesting. What you have to do this summer is two things to practice your methodology. But hold on. You don't have to complete the two things, but you better complete one of them. Okay, so we're going to complete one of them. And that means that um, everybody is going to have a bracketing interview. Many of you have already done your bracketing interview and you've submitted that. That's great. I'm going to do the bracketing interview for you if you haven't arranged that with someone else. Okay. Now you can see that um, we're in the right hand column over here, qualitative procedures, conduct a pilot interview or bracketing interview, and then choose one of the other following options. Well, you're doing a bracketing interview. It's not a choice. And I strongly recommend you conduct a pilot interview. You don't have to do it before this course is over. 
You only have to schedule it before the course is over. So here's the thing to think about. A pilot interview is a practice for you to use your questions, your interview questions or protocol, and, and you're going to practice. And what you're going to do is you're going to practice transcribing it so that you do that, okay? Because I need everyone to see how bad artificial intelligence is at voice to text. Some of you already know. Okay, but let's say, for example, you are... Let me pick uh, something realistic here. Um, here's the problem with a pilot interview. I'll just be general at first. If you interview someone for the pilot, you can't use that data in your study because you don't have permission from anyone to conduct a study yet. You do the pilot strictly for practice. So if you think, hey, that person right there, I really want their data in my study, interview them. But the best thing is if you're going to interview, for example, teachers of first year, freshmen, whatever, teachers in the freshman academy, then go interview a, a teacher of sophomores, right? If you're going to say, like, I'm going to focus on upper elementary, interview a kindergarten teacher instead of fifth grade teacher, all right? So that's, that's the best thing. If you have, in the past, conducted interviews with people and you're very comfortable with that, then you should choose one of the other things. So, for example, your, your field notes or artifact analysis. Um, and we can talk one-on-one -on -one about those different things if you're going to do that. Um, again, part two of the methodology practice, whatever part two you choose, needs to be scheduled before the end of this course. Okay, rather than completed. All right. That's it for me. From me. For now. What? Any, any hey, Dr. Son. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My phone, office phone went off. Um, So you were talking about the bracketing interview. Yeah. I did, I did the first set. And then tomorrow I follow up with UT. That's right. Is that what you're talking with, about? That's the bracketing interview. Yeah. So what you want to okay. do. If you're crunched for time this summer, you'll just schedule with someone. Find someone that you want to interview, a parent, for example, for you. But a parent, okay. maybe you pick someone actually that's really close to you for practice because you're like, wow, well, that'd okay. be a little weird to include them in my study because we're buddies or whatever, right? You okay. don't really want to interview your buddies for the study unless it, it seems necessary. Okay. Thanks. But, yeah, you're welcome. So if you all have a friend that's like, oh, they've got like they could be in my study, but it would maybe not be ethical. So I'm going to use them for my pilot interview because I know they'll take it easy on me and they'll they want to help. Yes. Okay. Hey, let's just go around real quick and um, say what research tradition you're using. So I'll just, I'll call your name and then you unmute your microphone and say what you're doing. If you are not available to talk, just put it in the chat. Okay. All right. Uh, Angie. Angie, what's your methodology tradition?
can you hear me? I'm uh, very confused right now. <laughs> um, I think that what I was using is, what I was thinking is not, I, I'm gonna have to read more about this. Uh, yeah. After you explain a lot of things, I think I was going on the wrong direction, so. What was your direction? Um, case study, phenomenal. It was a case, it's, it's a case study. Case study. And, okay, um, that's it. Oh. That's the most flexible, that's what we talked about. Oh, okay. That's the I most thought you flexible. wanted to give you more details about it. No, just, the, that's, we're just saying the name. Well. Oops. Let's see. Okay. Wendy, just put it in the chat. Sorry, I don't know why I keep on doing that. I was just saying that um uh I was trying to do some uh some overt observation focus group and interviews and do some semi-constructor interview, but I don't know, the more I read, I don't know if I'm trying to accomplish too much right now or if that is exactly what I need based on what I see on some of the studies that I've seen. Okay. I think this is going to be my hard chapter. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Francisco, I'm seeing that case study. Logan? I believe mine's a case study as well. A study. Although okay. the focus recently has been so much on chat, it's been my world. <laughs> oh, you're doing chat. You're not doing. Yeah, you're doing chat. It's different. This is okay. Yeah, it's just chat. That's what I. That's what I really meant to say. Good. <laughs> you got it, Gary. Uh, mine is ethnography. Good, Christine. Uh, mine's an ethnography as well. Good. Heather? Uh, I think last time we talked, we talked about doing a case study, but I'm leaning more towards phenomenology. That's what I need to do this week is narrow that down. That's not a decision to take lightly. Um, Zach? Case study. Case study. Wendy? says unavailable little email just put it in the chat francisco case study okay is that everybody let's see christine okay kathy we just uh, i believe it's going to be case study good okay all right so case study is is a lot and you guys saw i have two articles on case study they're both book chapters that you need to read. You have to read them. For now, for, for this week, just skim them. Find some good stuff. Drop it in to your draft. Okay? But you will need to get kind of like, hey, what if, what is case study? What do people do with it? Okay? All right. Any other questions? With mine specifically, Yeah. we talked about writing things in a scholarly manner. Mm -hmm. it, and for me, the struggle I've had recently is I feel like it's been redundant because I'm just citing the original, what Engstrom or Vygotsky or beyond kind of, I'm citing those original sources. Yeah. Is that wrong? No. It just feels uh, like I'll not just, enough. Yeah, I'll remind you that if you can find seminal studies or important studies chat mm. kind of chat kind of got big kind of blew up about so 15 years ago so find the studies use a lisa yamagata lynch study mm -hmm. right so talk so while you're talking about chat mm -hmm. and the generation when you're saying how it's used in education mm -hmm. talk about the yamagata lynch study Okay. Her book is not a study, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the empirical study that she did, it's like 
I don't know. I was looking at the titles. She, mm -hmm. so anyway, right. With that. Gotcha. Thank that'll you. Help you. That'll help you expand. Yeah. Make Perfect. it more, make it more relevant, connected to what you. Yeah. Doing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Son, before we leave, I clicked on the link that you sent out with the Google or Dropbox thing, and it says I didn't have access to view it. Huh. Or Google Drive, the thing that the I clicked on it, and I went to case study where the two. Oh, the, this. this yes, thing. I cannot open it either. Oh, this one? Let's see. Where is it? You mean the resource thing, this one? Right, right, yes. Okay, let me get this here. I got, I mean, I've got like six, one, two, three, four, five. I got seven people on this document. I know for Angie, if you're at school, uh, the school blocks the Google resources. So you may not be able to access it if you're on school internet. Thank you. Yeah, this one, this one is, um, oh man, this, everything's in the way. It says it's public on the web. Anyone with the link can open. So try to. Okay, I'll try it at home. Yeah, try a different browser, try at home. Try yeah, and I'll try a different computer because I'm using the school computer. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Great. All right. Uh, Dr. Son, just to clarify about the methodology practice, yeah. that's the bracketing interview that we did uh, with the Zoom group. What what do I need to turn in for that? The transcript or yeah, is it that just turn that in and that'd be fine? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, some of you will not get a chance to finish bracketing until September. That's okay. We're not in any rush. So like, let's see, Heather, Francisco, Zach, um, Angie, the four of you, I'm going to interview you and uh, you'll bring your, you'll bring your transcript. You'll send it to me, but I mean, we'll, we'll do your transcript with the group in September. That was a really helpful process i felt like it i got so much from that and just thinking about like oh like transcribing interviews for the dissertation kind of gives you a really good idea of how much time you're going to spend with that mm -hmm. you know yeah okay so i have one question it might be a little silly um how many chapters are we looking at overall for the dissertation? Because I know it's at least five. Are we looking at five? Yeah, unless you want to do something that's a little unconventional. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Just double checking. So we'll have three basically figured out and then two to write during the school year. Here's what, well, here's what we got. We got drafts. Right, right. Chapter one, two, and three draft is due. August 9th, what is it? Eighth? Whatever, but I'm looking at them one at a time, right? And then you get like, yeah. basically you get a little bit of extra time to beef them up. We do one more activity, um, which we'll talk about. And that we'll do a Zoom in the last week of class, like Monday or Tuesday. And um, then in the fall, you're just revising chapter one, two, and three until you get IRB approval. So you'll get, so you do chapter one, two, and three. And then I say, hey, it's good enough. Let's do your proposal defense. You'll get a committee of me and two other people, and you'll do a presentation and you'll say, here's what I'm doing. Here's the main ideas of chapter one. Here's the main ideas of chapter two. Here's the main ideas of chapter three. What questions do you have? What suggestions do you have? So that the committee will be like, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't and then we'll be like, all right, yeah, good. You're good. You're approved. And then you get your IRB. Then you start collecting data. And that's kind of like the fun part. The part we're on, you might, hey, y'all might love reading and writing. Okay. But this is kind of the chore. 
if you love this part, you're going to love chapter four and five even more. So once you get the data collected, you do what you said you're going to do in chapter three. You analyze it uh, with qual qualitative. We usually come up with themes, right? The themes answer the research question. And then in chapter four, you're, you're putting that in there. Here's the themes. Here's how I came up with the themes. Chapter five is where you say, hey, I learned all this stuff. I read a million words of stuff about this topic. I interviewed people. So when I put those two together, I know a lot. Here's what I know. Here's how it compares to the stuff that I put in chapter two. Here's what my theory helps me say. And now here's what schools should do. That's chap chapter five is when you're like, here's my TED talk is like there in chapter five. Okay. They're like, hey, I know a lot. I've studied, I've interviewed, and, and here's what schools should do. Right. So that's kind of the what's fun about chapter five is you really get to say, hey, here's what schools should do. And chapter four is fun because you're like, hey, this is the answer to the research question. Chapter one is fun because it's like, here's what I'm doing. And chapter two is not fun. And chapter three is generally not fun. Sorry. It's just, that's just my opinion. And 90% of my students. Some people like the chapter two. Good. So that's the five. And I don't even know, just people do different stuff. You know, people do all kinds of people do crazy stuff for a dissertation. You know, some people do a dance. Look it up, Google it. I'm, I'm serious. You guys, there's so much out there for your first study. It's good to kind of just do kind of the normal, just do kind of the regular stuff. So that that final proposal that we have to turn in on August 7, can you explain a little bit what that is going to be about? Because that is in nine days. You just put together all your drafts. Chapter one, two, and three, you put it in one document. Oh, okay. Not a presentation like a PowerPoint or something like that. Just basically like putting all of them together in one assignment. Yeah, you already have done the work. Okay. You so just, basically, if we did one, two, and three, and we talk with you and we have that, it's like combining all three together with all the resources. Okay. I you're done. We write something else. At the end of this week, at the end of this week, when you submit chapter three, you're only going to do a little bit more work. Okay. You can do as much as you want, you know, like in terms of revisions. But okay. you'll see if you've got a full score on the three different chapters, Okay. Just take a deep so, breath and do the other stuff. Do the methodology practice and do the summary of proposed research. Okay. So the um, I'm sorry, I'm a little I'm a little stressed about this chapter. <laughs> Three. But oh, I'm breathing. I'm a very positive person. I just I'm having a hard time tackling how to write it down. Uh -huh. So I read a lot but I don't want to read too much where then my words become too much close to that. So I'm trying to be original on the writing. And I think that's where I'm struggling with that oh, part here. Don't worry about it. Just cite it. Don't be original. Chapter three, that's what I'm saying is you don't have to be original in chapter okay. three. That's what's great about the doctorate of education, the EDD. Okay. If it was a PhD, I would be like, no, you, it's, you okay. gotta be creative. You gotta come up with the, best newest possible way you could possibly gather the information and analyze it you get to do what has been done hundreds of times okay yeah so don't stress about that all right and one more question i'm sorry yeah. uh for the methodology practice part yeah. uh, you said that we will conduct that interview that you mentioned that we will do it in september that's the second part or that's something different that's one thing. Okay. Just have to work on the first portion of it. Methodology practice. We're, we're going to do it. It's Don't worry. I'll contact you about that. Okay. Yeah. We'll schedule All right. that. All right. Thank you. You got it. Okay. Anything else?
<laughs> so you you mentioned don't be creative in this third chapter. Right. And I've done my due diligence in citing sources and that sort of thing. But within chat, I've talked about each of those components and I've talked about, I don't know if this is original, but the relationship of those components within one another in an activity system. That's is that not, space to do that? That's not original. Right. It, it, what well, I, mean I was hoping that, that was what you would say. What I mean by that is yeah. that you are taking you are doing what's already been done with different yeah. stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's definitely different stuff. But okay. when I mean don't be original, I mean you're not stepping outside the normal lines of chat. Right. Okay. So I'm not off base doing that. Right. No, you're establishing that in this section. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Thank no, you. That's not what I mean. Yeah. Good. All right. All right, we good? Good enough, anyway? <laughs> Got it, you've done excellent, you've already done excellent work this summer, already, these chapters. I've got four more chapter twos to, to, to read, if you turned it in later. I haven't looked at it yet, but I did look at the length. Got a lot of work done, so. Be proud. Do your best on chapter three. Crank out 10 pages. Submit it. Okay. Sound good? All right. We'll see y'all. I'm going to stop the recording now. And you guys will talk to you, text with you this week.